Today, so-called whistleblowers took center stage in the House Government Oversight Committee. Three State Department officials who oversight Chairman Darrell Issa has deemed as whistleblowers are testifying on the events that happened in Benghazi on September 11th last year. Now, here's a roundup of various news outlets reporting on it today. From CBS News, Benghazi whistleblowers head to House Committee. From Fox News, Republicans look to show cover-ups as whistleblowers give Benghazi testimony. And from USA Today, Benghazi whistleblowers to testify, state defends its actions. So you get the picture. At the hearing, Chairman Issa made it clear that he expects whistleblowers to be protected. These brave whistleblowers are in fact what makes this committee's work work. We are the committee that oversees and that led for new whistleblower protection signed by this president. The public has a right to hear their accounts, and we, more than any other committee in the Congress, must respect whistleblowers and work on a bipartisan basis always to protect them. Right. Well, anyone who's been paying attention to what's going on the last four years and has seen the ruthless crackdown on whistleblowers by our government must think that what's going on here is rather odd. The White House has gone after more whistleblowers and used the Espionage Act to do it than all other presidential administrations in history combined. And how many of those whistleblowers were given a platform in Chairman, Chairman Issa's Government Oversight Committee? How many were heralded in the media and given protection from retaliation and prosecution? None. No such credit was given to whistleblower Thomas Drake, who exposed a massive illegal surveillance program on American citizens run out of the NSA after 9-11. He was charged under the Espionage Act and faced 35 years in prison before he eventually was let go with a misdemeanor. Chairman Issa didn't run to the defense of Drake, nor did he run to the defense of former CIA agent John Kiriakou, who blew the whistle on torture within the agency. For exposing this crime, Kiriakou was also charged under the Espionage Act. He's now in prison, serving 30 months. And nothing for Bradley Manning either wanted to expose to the American people, quote, what happens and why it happens in our wars abroad. He blew the whistle on this particularly disturbing video from Baghdad, where a dozen people, including two Reuters journalists, were killed by an American Apache attack helicopter. Manning is facing another secret pretrial today and has been in detention for more than 1,000 days. The number of hearings held in Chairman Issa's Oversight Committee on Manning's detention? Zero. So what is going on here? What's behind these stark differences in how whistleblowers are treated? Well, for one, we have to question whether or not today's Benghazi hearing witnesses are actually whistleblowers. There's a difference between, on one hand, exposing crime and wrongdoing, and on the other hand, second-guessing decisions that were made or questioning political motivations. That seems to be what's happening here. Also, these so-called whistleblowers hold information that could be politically embarrassing to the Obama administration, and in particularly embarrassing to former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who might run for president in a few years. Unfortunately for Thomas Drake, John Kiriakou, and Bradley Manning, they had information that embarrassed both Republicans and Democrats who have been complicit in illegal surveillance and war crimes. These men couldn't be exploited by one political party or the other. That's why they are where they are now and not sitting in front of Chairman Issa's Oversight Committee instead. So, if you want to be a whistleblower, if you want to expose moral wrongdoings and criminal activity, well, go for it. Unfortunately, you just have to make sure there's a political agenda to hang your whistle on. In Washington, Sam Sachs, RT.